we have Department of Truth, number eight. Yeah. Do the thing. That's eight. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so close with beta. Yep. And I think it just... That's okay, yeah. Just got me. And just see, it's, fl- it's flipped for me. Like, I'm just so close on this one. Mm-hmm. It almost got... It almost got... That's the guy. <laughs> Almost, but it didn't. <laughs> Don't choose that as the thumbnail for this video, right? Because weeks. it's because this book is That's right. The there you go. Well, this has got a J by its name, so by by it. So go for it. Oh, it does. Dang it! I yeah, can't break it down because I don't. I, I won't do as well of a job. <laughs> <laughs> so this I'll issue basically. This issue basically starts out with a really interesting conversation between, um, oh shit, Lee Harvey Oswald and this other guy whose face I we, I hmm? think his name is Hawk or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, something like that. Um, and his face is always kind of obscured and stuff. I mean, they show it straight up at like one point, but like most of the time, yeah, Hawk, that's his name. Basically, this is the guy that goes in and helps them rearrange Re- rearrange some history as it needs to be for for the team um and they sort of you know go back and forth about what he does and then they say you know yeah there's this kid that uh there's these kids running around with you know knife-handed nightmares and hockey mask serial killers on their t-shirts like they're not really scared of things anymore um and they're saying you know maybe we need to get you know maybe we need to give the media a certain image you know run them in the right direction we've got a kid that we're watching out for uh that you know needs to get pushed in the right direction essentially Mm -hmm. and he's like all right well what's the kid's name and he says turner cole turner (gasps) which is our main character Mm -hmm. um and then we have uh, a really nice scene between cole and his partner where they're walking through um the uh, denver international airport and I just this was probably the reason why it was my favorite part is because it was like a re, like a really in depth analysis of the conspiracy theory of yep. the Denver International Airport, which I have heard about often, but I am not a conspiracy theorist, and so like I like reading about them in a really indiscriminate sort of like oh, these people are crazy kind of way. But like yeah. this really breaks down a lot of so I'm not gonna sit there and go over like every last little thing but because it's they go fucking deep it, in i mean it's, it's it's the majority of the comic like them talking about like oh well you you know this is everybody thinks that the this is um a sign about the new world order and you know why did they build a building and then all of a sudden tear two parts of the building down and yeah just all this crazy shit um but basically they like go to this little hidden area and it turns out that this is like one of the main areas where man i cannot remember anything from this book the name wise what's the bad group called the black, uh, bad, black hat black hat this is where black hat has been um you know essentially creating their falsehoods creating their their fake news i guess yeah, you could they're fake you know that's exactly right fake news that's it creating their fake news um and he's like you know he basically asks his partner like what are we doing here like what's going on and she's like you know we're supposed to be meeting this hawk guy um and who while they're walking like who she does not like yeah she does no. not like it at all um we get that pretty evident from the first part that uh oswald doesn't like him either mm-hmm. and like they're walking around and seeing all of these like failed things that they've built or like in progress things that they've made um like they, they go into this one room there's like reptilian creature like humanoid creatures like hanging in like giant embryos or something like it's it's really gross Super um nice. and she she tells him like we think this is where they manifested your star face man and they're like how how could they have taken a nightmare from my childhood and made it real like I don't even believe in him anymore. Like, I, you know, and if he was supposed to be created from my mind, how can he be real? Yeah. Like, this just doesn't make any sense. Um, and then good old Hawk shows up, and you know, Hawk's like, "Oh, it's been a, it's, it's been too long since I've seen you." 
And she's like, no, it fucking has it. Leave me alone. Like, no, it has it. Go away. Um, and yeah, you know, Cole meets Hawk and is like, yeah, I heard you're supposed to be the, you know, you're the big boy, you're the big guy, like, that can get things done. <laughs> and Hawk says, I'm the motherfucking magic man of the Department of Truth. <laughs> Don't ever forget it. Um, and yeah, so basically, it looks like Cole and Hawk are going to team up and we're going to see just exactly what it is that Hawk does and what it is that he can do on creating his own fake news. Mm -hmm. So it does, it doesn't seem like black cats, just the one that's out there, um, purposefully manipulating, uh, reality. It seems like the department of truth has their own, uh, uh, a wall kind of guy or like rogue kind of agent that, um, good. No, oh, I was gonna say what's crazy about this is like he, like, not only does Cole's partner or you know, I don't yeah, know Rudy, how to describe her, uh, Rudy, yeah, I don't, Rudy. she, bubba, she, bubba. she, um, divulges some information that, like, you're like, wait, like, you double take, you're like, what did you say? Like, what? Hold on. So she talks about um, the guys that she killed in the first book to save uh, Cole. You know, it was a bunch of these millionaires. And she's like, well, we have to cover it up somehow, right? And so she explains to him, like, you know, we had to create, we had to falsify and create new bodies so that each one of these dudes died not at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. These billionaires. So we had to cover that up, right? And that's, that's small potatoes. And then she explains hawk and hawk like you said is the enforcer he's the guy that you'd bring in when like earth shattering reality things happen and he's able to just squash it and so they called him in to get rid of the giant ice wall that was created by these men at the beginning mm -hmm. of the series that were talking about the end of the earth so yeah. he squashes that right but in her explanation to cole and i think as a reader you're supposed to pick up on this is like well, how can you trust that? Like, how can you trust that they're creating doppelgangers of these dead bodies to make it look like they actually died in the name of the Department of Truth? <laughs> and so Cole in this issue is still like trying to figure out, is he working for the good guys? Who really are the good guys? Or are we all bad guys? And then you've got Hawk walking in here, who's a complete wild card, um, who oh, likes to... Card. What? That's just a wild card. Wild card. Um... You know, it's the, <laughs> you don't know what's up and what's down in this series, and I think that Tinian is playing that fiddle perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, you think you've got this book figured out, and it's like, nope, turning it upside down again. And uh, you know, what a great time to get Simmons back on this book, art wise. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. not to say that the last two issues were bad they weren't but it was just kind of off because we got so and what i find hilarious about that is is when we first started this issue we were like i don't know about the art like it's good but it's kind of weird and then he goes away for two issues and you're like fuck i wish our artwork was back and it <laughs> is um but yeah like <laughs> there's a lot of mythos being built in this book that just it gets me more excited for the series because that because it means we're just gonna there's so many rabbit holes we can go down and i just it doesn't sound like this book is going to end anytime soon and i'm right. totally for it um and then like i don't know if you saw the cover for the next issue but it's like the book of the dead and it's the it's the lady with the x over her eyes putting her fingers over cole's partner and her eyes are turning into x's and i'm like oh no <laughs> like yeah, I, I just think we're going to be going all over the place. Like, this is literally the inception of comics right now. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, this book has been optioned for either a movie or a series. And holy fuck, here we go. Like, yeah. At first, I didn't really know if that was a good idea. And now I'm like, uh, more money, please. Like, let's <laughs> go. Like, I want to see it. So. Oh yeah, I'm I'm very excited about it, and I honestly like it, you know there was so many different elements to this book that I think were good, but I just I really really enjoyed the off the wall, super deep explanation of the the Denver airport mm -hmm. conspiracy theory. That was definitely my favorite part. 
I I liked that and it was a good part. I think that's where the book kind of uh, I'll be simplistic and it kind of lost me a little bit. Like my attention, I was like, okay, like, and I think that's what that's the only reason why this wasn't my pick of the week. But I See, get I get why that was necessary. I think that part of the book for some people is it, it, it or at least what it does for me is I start hearing this in depth analysis of the conspiracy theory and like what the people that believe conspiracies think and by the time i'm done reading it i'm i and then i was or then by the time we get to the point where she's like and of course it's totally bullshit i was like oh, wait a minute what because it was like i found myself like oh this makes sense like, this totally <laughs> makes sense. like okay now i kind of get it and then she's like well of course it's totally bullshit and i'm like Oh yeah, of course that's of course that's bullshit. <laughs> Duh! Like I didn't believe it for a second. No but... way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think that's what Tinian's trying to do. I think he's yeah. literally like trying to be so good at describing these things and like so you like listen. You can twist anything to make it sound right or make it sound like it makes sense. But <laughs> come on, this you know this is bullshit. That's cool. Yeah. No, I agree. That's that's badass. Well, that's Department of Truth number eight. I am definitely looking forward to issue nine. Um, this this is just a good book, man. If you're not reading Department of Truth, what you doing, bro? Like, fucking, go pick up the trade and then read this one. So.